big stuff in the NFL this weekend. Maybe you've heard the Steelers have another quarterback, and it's Justin Fields. Joining us now on the hotline for all the latest NFL news. Longtime NFL insider. Check him out on Odyssey, Washington Post, 105.7 The Fan in Baltimore. Jason Locke and Fora. j Law, what's happening, bud? What's going on, gentlemen? What's up? Uh, so, you know, when this happened this weekend, I, I said two things. I said, okay, the Steelers have found a way to very inexpensively remake their quarterback room, and there's no way Justin Fields isn't starting by week six. Those are my oh, two takeaways from this. No, I think he's starting. I mean, I, I think Justin Fields is their starting quarterback. I, I think uh, – I, I, I I think you'd have to have a catastrophic preseason for it not to happen. Um, Look, there's a lot of people in that Steelers building who were very high on Justin Fields, and they played this perfectly. And they were incredibly patient, and they let this come to them. And then they got a, a potential diamond, you know, for the price of a lump of coal. under their general manager, Omar Khan, and they're, they're utilizing means of player acquisition and, and really um, being progressive about turning the roster in a way that I just think kind of runs counter to what we've thought of the Roonies for a long time. And they've completely turned over that quarterback room, and they've done it selling high and buying low. <laughs> The entire way. I mean, I think if you look at what they got for Pickett versus what people are getting for quarterbacks these days, including what they got Russell Wilson for and what they got Justin Fields for, even that part of of this whole, um, you know, of of this whole scenario is is pretty wild. So they are infinitely more talented, more athletic, uh, deeper at the most important position in the NFL. And I'm not going to tell you that there isn't some risk involved. You know, Justin Fields, I'm pretty high on him. I think there's a lot of things to like about him, but it's not as if he's won a ton of games and lit up a ton of box scores. So I get it. And Russell Wilson is clearly on, you know, the back nine of his career. But with what they already have and with the way they can play defense and and – how they have regularly gone to the playoffs with quarterbacks who pale in comparison to even these two. Um, I, I think it's been it's been pretty amazing, honestly, to watch them hustle their way through this thing. Different way of doing business for me, you know, the Chicago end that I am and watching this play out, Jason. Uh, the logic of trading Fields at this point for nothing really didn't make a whole lot of sense no. to me. Right? No. Like, why would you not hold him at this point uh, as an insurance card or waiting for the obvious and, and inevitable catastrophic injury right. that'll befall one or more quarterbacks? I don't get it whatsoever. Um, you're months away from needing to have Justin Fields in your building. I mean, months. Uh, who cares about the offseason program and all that stuff? Like, you know, you, you don't. It's kind of bonkers to me. Um, I don't get it. And there's a lot of people throwing all these flowers at Ryan Poles, and like I, I don't know, man. Like I, I, like yeah, they, they, we're a better team in the second half last year in the first half, and you know they, I, I think they have marginally turned a corner, and they may have their first franchise quarterback about to fall to them in a draft, you know, and something they haven't had in forever. But I also think they botched this field thing pretty poorly. They, there, there wasn't um, the right minds, and there wasn't the right degree of stability around him, let alone the right players. And to to bookend this thing by basically trading a first round pick for uh, a wide receiver who the Steelers were benching. Like, I mean, it was an open secret that. Chase Claypool didn't really have a future there and had worn out his welcome. And then you bookend it by then stealing their quarterback from them for nothing. <laughs> it's nuts. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's really nuts. But I wrote about this at the Washington Post. Poles was overplaying his hand at the combine. I talked to a bunch of executives who were like, they're not 
being realistic about what this trade's going to look like. And then other people started doing other things because it's like, well, we like Justin Fields, but we're not going to put our offseason on hold for Justin Fields. So, you know, we you, you, you started to see things happen. And, you know, Cousins was going to end up somewhere. And, you know, it was going to be Minnesota or Atlanta. And then when that happened and Minnesota goes and gives, you know, legitimate money to Minshew, I mean, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the Raiders give legitimate money to Minshew, and Minnesota makes a trade, right, to get in position to move up and draft a quarterback. And, look, Chicago, they're not going to trade Justin Fields in the division anyway. Like, Pittsburgh was smart, and they waited to pounce, and when they did, they they stole him. I mean, it'll never make sense to me. It 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 won't. Um you're right. Somebody was going to come out of the draft not having what they thought they were going to get. Somebody was going to have a quarterback slip and fall on the first day of rookie camp or whatever, or mini camp and tear an ACL. It's just inevitable. And why they felt like Justin Fields was going to be such a distraction at a time when there are no distractions. You know, like guys are, what, just starting to return to buildings to lift weights and drink protein shakes together? Like, we're not doing anything real for a while. And even the stuff we pretend is real, like OTAs and mini camps, is fake football. It, it, it'll it never make sense to me. NFL insider Jason Locke and for our guest, Jason Smith, Mike Harmon, live from the TireRack.com studios. All right, Jay, so other big news today, well, Leighton Van Der Esch retiring at the age of 26 says his body's not going to cooperate. Cowboys cut their cap hit for Dak Prescott for this year, but not for next year, other years. They still haven't signed anybody. This all-in year for the Cowboys is so much fun, isn't it? Look, Jerry Jones is all-in on profits, baby. I mean, you can't you can't take it with you, but he damn sights trying. And even pe- what people have lauded him for the past, like, you know, oh, Gilmore. I mean, go look at what he's done. There are guys at the end of their career who he's getting on the back end of contracts and he's giving up nothing for guys who would otherwise be cut, and he's renting them for a year. There's no real guarantees. There's no future money. There's nothing hanging over him. Like, he's been playing this shell game for a while, and people fall for it and act like he's dying to win a Super Bowl. And I'm like, well, he's got a funky way of showing it. Like, I I don't – I mean, it is what it is. They're not a well-managed team. Um, they don't have a real general manager. They've got a, a multi-billion dollar – enterprise right that is a branding um icon and they've got a logo that's iconic and they've got a history that's iconic and and they're about the most boring ass pedestrian team on the planet they're right they're never going to be that awful they're never going to be really great and we know how their seasons are going to end before they begin yet somehow there's this hype train and all these narratives about how great they are or how great the defense is or how great Dan Quinn was, or like, I, I mean, Kellen Moore. Like, I mean, it's just it's just one parable after the next. It's one media creation after the next. But there's no there there. Like, it, you know, the quarterback's very good. He's not great. He's far from transcendent. He has his warts. We know when they show up. He's got them by the balls because Jerry always overpays a couple of guys, right? Like there's a few dudes who he becomes real close to, and he'll give them more than they should have. I mean, it was Zeke for a while, but even that runs its course. He even ran its course eventually with the left tackle, right? The offensive line's in disrepair, and they rode that for a while when they were better than marginal. But those guys have all basically moved on. They haven't drafted as well since. I mean, 